everyone. Uh, my name is Jani. I'm on the Vancouver Startup Week team. I would just like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are grateful to be virtually gathered on Indigenous land, regardless of where you're joining us from. I am grateful to be on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish peoples. I am privileged to live, work, and play on these lands. First, I'd like to thank you for joining us for VSW 2021, and welcome to how to actually change the world and design an impact strategy or how to design an impact strategy session hosted by Urban Changemaker Coalition. Um, this session is part of the Founders Track, um, which is proudly supported by Sage Accounting. Sage knows you didn't start your business to become an accountant. Sorry to any accountants out there. Sage Accounting keeps your business organized and running smoothly. Track your cash flow, send out invoices, and get paid quickly. Visit the Sage Accounting booth to access free guides and templates for starting your business finances the right way. Plus, get an exclusive VSW discount if you're, you're, if you're ready to switch from Excel. During this session, if you do have any questions for our speaker, please post them in the Q&A and the Whova session. You can also upvote those questions. So I'll now pass the mic over to Rosaline and we'll get started. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jani. Uh, first of all, good afternoon. And you know, I imagine you're getting yourself settled in and please uh, let me or Jani know at any point if you cannot hear me or not see my screen. If you have tech issues, usually the best thing to do is uh, dial out and dial back in. And that's about it. So I am Rosalind. I am the executive director of Urban Changemaker Coalition. And I am very excited to uh, host this workshop on how to design an impact strategy. So today's call is going to take approximately about 90 minutes. It's intended to be an interactive workshop. I will ask for you to um, submit your answers on Whova and really um, to participate actually in an activity. And for that, I ask for your undivided attention. So this workshop is going to be pretty tightly packed in content. So if you want to turn off any notifications or put away your devices in a drawer where you won't be tempted, uh, now is the time to do so. I encourage you to have a notebook and a pen. Of course, you can have a digital notebook, but you might want to draw arrows and uh, create diagrams for the activity later. So having a physical notebook um, or a piece of paper will probably be the easiest. For today's agenda, I want to learn about you. Um, and I am also going to, of course, in return, introduce myself and Urban Changemaker Coalition. And we're going to answer what is an impact strategy and why is it important? Then we're going to go through the bulk of the session, which is going to guide you through really the beginnings or the bare bones structure of your very first impact strategy. We may or may not have time for some presentation uh, from one of you about what you achieved through this workshop. And we may have time to discuss, but honestly, I don't think we will uh, based on um, how much content we have, but we'll see. And then we will also talk about what comes next after you have gotten started on your very first impact strategy. If you were to continue with your strategy building, what are the next steps that come afterwards? And if you need support in that process, how to get support from Urban Changemaker Coalition. And the first thing I'm most curious about is to learn a little bit about your about you. So who are you? So if you could type in the chat about your organization, your role, and what brought you here. So there was a poll about um, self-identifying, you know, why you, you became interested in this workshop, but I'd love to hear from you. So if you could just take a few minutes to type in the chat about, um, type in the chat, I would love to see that. For any of you who have just joined, just uh, we are just taking a minute to um, type in the chat about um, your organization uh, and your role and what brought you to this workshop.
I'm not sure if it's just me or if it's if it's, if uh, people are taking a couple of minutes to write. Um, I don't see anything in the chat being updated. I think we have a few polls that were, or the um, submissions for the poll. And it looks like from the poll overall, there's about 40% who have identified saying, I don't have a specific role about social impact, but I deeply care. Mm -hmm. And then next would be 20% saying I am part of a for-profit social enterprise. Um, but I think people are taking the time to fill that out still. Sounds good. Yeah, it's, uh, I noticed, oh, I see, I see another person um, coming in to say that they are part of a nonprofit social enterprise. Great to see social entrepreneurs um, in the group. And I, it's also great to see people are curious and people are trying to understand about a world that they're interested in, but maybe not so familiar with. Perfect. Um, and I understand that, especially for people for whom social impact is kind of new to them, um, some of the contents in this workshop might be things you haven't thought about or you were never taught <laughs> because you're not in the field. And if so, just uh, take it in stride and we'll just kind of learn and see how things go. So if you could, great. And as we come along, um, feel free to um, add your introductions in the chat. Let me move on. Great. Now that I'm getting a sense of uh, people who are in the room, many of whom, some of whom are social entrepreneurs yourself or in a social impact related role in your company, um, but many of you who are just curious and who actually want to learn. Of course, uh, just letting you know that the audience intended for this workshop is for someone who works for an organization or a project that has an explicit goal of positive impact in the world. And how you're doing that, um, is to solve a specific challenge by doing something about it. The reason I stress doing is not just that you're just not giving away money for someone else to do the actual activities, but that your organization or your product uh, project is, part, uh, is taking part of the activities. I understand that positive impact might not be the only goal or even the primary goal of your organization. Maybe revenue growth is, maybe profit for your, uh, for your shareholders is, that's fine but positive impact is one of the goals of the organization. And for everybody who are curious onlookers, who want to understand and learn, I understand some of you have registered for this workshop because you are curious and maybe you have personal missions already, but it might be vague, like you want to do the very best you can and deliver value and help the world. Okay, so it's not very, it's not tackling a specific challenge, that's fine. Um, this is a good opportunity to really dip your toes into the world of social impact and learn about what is possible and what kind of work needs to be done if you were to try and actively create positive impact in the world. And in that case, you know, choose a hypothetical, right? Think of an issue you're passionate about. Think of an impact-driven organization that is tackling that. It could be a social enterprise, you know, a charity, you know, maybe it's the clothing drive at your church anything really goes. So, and use it as a case study to complete the workshop and follow along. And of course, we have to, uh, I have to introduce you to who we are and why on earth you would care um, what I have to say about impact strategies. So I am the director of a uh, agency called the Urban Change Maker Coalition. And our mission is to empower local change makers to address deep rooted challenges in their community. And how we do that, is we essentially support organizations to start, run, and fund positive impact programs, many of which are startups. So depending on the world you come from, you may be more familiar with the term technical assistance agency. If you come from the nonprofit or international development world, maybe you come from more so the business world and consulting and fundraising agency resonates more with you. Either works. So we do work that is both multinational and large. So for example, we help secure uh, 20 million pound uh, for a rainforest conservation accelerator 
um, by writing a winning proposal for them. And this extra funding allowed them to extend their program by two years and expand into Peru. We also do work that is hyper-local and really small, but deep. So this is a project where we actually went through the process of analyzing a social issue, devising an impact strategy, and then devise an intervention and actually ran the intervention ourselves. So there's a lot of stigma and stereotypes about the downtown east side community in Vancouver, which leads to fear avoidance and creates a divide between the rest of Vancouver and the community uh, local. And our challenge was really to change the narrative from this region being about deprivation to hope and empowerment. What we ended up designing as our outcome was we designed and hosted walking tours that partnered with the local social enterprises to celebrate the innovations that's already taking place. And we invited the locals to speak about their experiences and the journey that they've gone through. And this was really effective in um, changing a lot of misconceptions and stereotypes. So, here was an instance of how when we devise a social uh, impact strategy and that led to the design of a specific intervention, which begs the question, what is an impact strategy? So if this is a term you've never heard of or you might have some ideas, uh, but you're not exactly sure, I would define impact strategy as how to design and implement an intervention that produces better outcome for your stakeholders. So this outcome may be social, environmental, economic, or all of the above. You can really define what is better outcome in your specific mission. And an impact strategy comes in with three parts, a theory of change, an implementation plan, a monitoring framework, but I like to use the term pivot framework, same thing. So, Implementation plan or monitoring framework, you can probably guess what those words mean. You might, have an, um, you might have used implementation plans or monitoring frameworks in your in different contexts, or you already have one for if you're a social enterprise. I think theory of change is much more of a jargon, so I apologize for using jargon. Um, and today we are actually going to go deeper into the theory of change, and we're going to really walk away with a bare bones skeleton of, or the bare bone beginnings of a theory of change. But what the main focus will be to understand the process behind creating interventions that actually work. So what kind of work is required? What kind of steps do I need to go through? Just warning you, uh, impact strategies are a lot, a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> and if you know it's so much work, then why do you need one? Why is it necessary? Basically, because you want to make sure that all your efforts to create positive impact are achieving anything worthwhile in the world. So if you really want to have impact, you have to have an impact strategy. So <laughs> Here is a picture. And maybe this picture and what it implies about learning um, that your solution maybe wasn't the best one uh, in hindsight, maybe this picture would be funny if your uh, project, your organization, or your program didn't have real world consequences. So if it didn't mean that you had just convinced 500 single mothers that joining your training program would lead to decent jobs in the retail industry and they can feed their family. Okay, it would maybe be funny. If you realize down the road that a lack of training doesn't actually overcome the employer's prejudice against hiring people from a certain postal code or certain economic background. And if you only realize down the road that retailers often like to train their staff with their own branded material and branded ways of greeting customers and managing inventory, okay, maybe it'd be funny, but it's really not because now what you've done is you've created a program, run it for a while and realize that this intervention doesn't work and you just let down a lot of vulnerable people after getting their hopes up. You've also wasted resources that could have gone into a program that would actually have been beneficial for them. And if this sounds like a realistic example, it's because it is, it's very much a true story. So I'm really tired of great intentions that change nothing. Sometimes great intentions that only contribute to the problem and waste everyone's time and really precious funding in the process. 
So if we don't want to build half a bridge and realize we should have built a boat, built a boat instead, then where should we start? When you are starting on an impact strategy, here's some of the mindset we really need to take and the approach we need to take. Curiosity. So being willing to dig deeper than the obvious to uncover the insights that others don't have and to find solutions that are different from the first thing that comes to mind. Humility is the willingness to be proven wrong by evidence, to understand that, well, actually what I thought probably wasn't the best thing after all, and listening to the evidence that you uncover in the process of creating an impact strategy. And being comfortable with complexity. So the world already exists in a complex state. And I personally prefer the term intervention to solution because intervention recognizes that the world already exists with its own incentives, structures, and a lot of inertia. And our role as a change maker is to really shift the existing system slightly, not coming in as a savior to saying that somebody who is helpless, I'm gonna solve all your problems for you. But it's really about um, shifting the system or the environment or the habits that um, these people uh, occupy. And learning first, it's about understanding and recognizing that almost all social or environmental problems are already solved to a degree. So often the people you're trying to support or the people you're trying to change already have their own solutions or at least some kind of coping mechanism. And the solution may be ineffective, inefficient, only solve part of the problem, it may be unsustainable, or it's distributed unequally, so only some people get access to the solution while others don't. Okay, sure, but somebody somewhere has already solved it. So we, would, we should come in to listen and observe first to understand what solutions already exist and figure out what is our role in intervening to improve on the existing solutions or replace parts of the ex existing solution for something better. I will um, probably pause for questions later, um, but let's really get into the actual impact strategy. So this is the time to pull out your notebooks or paper and um, think about a case study that works for you or think about your organization or your program if you already have one. And so usually when I talk to change makers or social entrepreneurs, they often already have these two things identified for themselves. So a mission, so the change they want to see in the world and the activities that they're doing um, to achieve this mission. And we're going to take um, a couple of, a few minutes to write this down for yourself in your notebook. And I'll show you the case study we're gonna follow along to demonstrate the points. This is a social enterprise based in Surrey whose mission is to end bullying in schools. What they do is they host anti-bullying workshops and they basically sell these workshops to school boards and that's how they make their money. And of course, as a part of the sales process, they also end up advocating why it's important to invest in anti-bullying education to school administrators. So I've listed both of those activities. Take a few minutes to write this down for yourself.
for any of you who are just joining, please pull out a notebook and a pen. And we are either um, writing down and completing the beginnings of an impact strategy for your organization, if you're a part of a social enterprise or a charity or part of an impact driven role. If you're not, um, take the case study of you know, a charity or a some kind of social impact program that you're passionate about and follow along with the exercises based on that case study. I'll give you a couple more minutes to uh, complete this. Okay. So now that we have a mission and activities, this is usually the part that uh, most change makers have already done for themselves, especially if you've already gotten started on doing some kind of activities. We're going to take one approach of how to create an impact strategy based on this information. One way is to follow along with the journey of a protagonist. So in this protagonist uh, will be someone whose behavior you wanna change. So if you're working on a zero waste project, this protagonist might be an average consumer who is throwing away material that could be recycled. If you are an anti-racism advocate, this could be a person with racist beliefs. Or maybe this protagonist doesn't need to change their behavior or maybe their circumstances need to change. So in the case of the job training, um, true story I talked about earlier, it would be a single mother with low income and uh, low job prospects. And this protagonist can be an institution or an organization, uh, not just a person. But for the very first time that you're going through this journey, I really encourage you to choose a person just because it's easier. Um, if it is an organization or an institution, maybe you want to talk about a specific person's job. So somebody who has the role of a fundraiser in the uh, charity you want to support, or somebody who is a decision maker in the organization, just so that it's a bit easier to follow along. And for the case study, I'm going to choose Oliver as our protagonist. And on a new piece of paper, we're going to create one uh, box on the left that is about the current state and one box on the far right about the desired state. And there will be a long arrow with a lot of space in between that connects the two. Here's an example of what you could write about kind of the current reality that Oliver or your protagonist is in. So in the case of the anti-bullying uh, workshop, social enterprise, Oliver currently bullies peers and calls them names, really a, a verbal harassment. Um, and one of the ways or reasons why he does that is he often gets into power struggles with peers and staff in the school. Where we want Oliver to be in an ideal world is that he is able to socialize with his peers in a very healthy way. And not only does he stop bullying, but he actually models what it's like to be an anti-bully in his class and becomes an advocate for the cause. So this is about just writing the description of what the current reality for your protagonist would be and the, current, uh, and the ideal reality for the protagonist would be. Take a few minutes uh, to write this down for your protagonist. And it's 25 now, so maybe at, uh, uh, 3.30, we'll move on to the next.
If you're having any difficulties or you have questions about the exercises, feel free to pop them in the Q&A or the chat and I can address them as we go along. Hey, Rosaline, I just uh, saw a question on Whova there. Uh, it says, does the protagonist have to be a person? Uh, yes, it doesn't have to be in a real, it could be an institution or an organization or something bigger, uh, but it's easier <laughs> in the case of um, just trying it for the first time if you choose a specific person, for example, within an institution, one of the decision makers of the institution, just can be easier, especially if it's the first time you're going around. If it's an animal or a different kind of stakeholder, sure, that could also work too. If you're, for example, working on animal abuse, maybe it's easier to work on the animal owner um, or something like that. If your topic is environmental and you feel like, well, my topic isn't very focused on people, chances are people are the ones wrecking <laughs> and causing the environmental problems. So think about, you know, whose situation needs to change and whose behavior needs to change. Let me give you a couple of min more minutes to finish this up. All right, try wrapping up the last bits of uh, thoughts you are writing down. Okay. So now that we have a description of what their current reality or current behavior is like and where we want to get to, this is kind of the question I would like to pose. So what happens in between, right? Um, hopefully something more detailed than a miracle occurs. So what we're going to do next is to uh, describe the steps of change that needs to happen in between current and the ideal future state. So I have already uh, outlined a version for um, Oliver. Let me just walk you through it so that you can kind of see what I mean by decide, uh, outlining and describing the states of change that need to happen for the protagonist to get to the desired end. So for example, if Oliver right now is a bully and he gets into power struggles, he needs to first of all realize that his behavior is not appropriate before he can want to change his behavior and relationships, right? First thing that needs to happen. Then 
after he wants to wanting to change is not good enough if he doesn't know how to change. So he needs to relearn how to relate to peers. Okay, so he, now he knows how to do so. Is he actually able to do so? So he is now more tolerant and he needs to be more emotionally stable when he's in school. Um, and then that allows him to reconcile with peers and apologize to peers that he bullied before. Then he can be somebody who stands up for peers when they get bullied, which then leads to the desired state of being an advocate. Me going through this flowing flow diagram of different uh, steps of change is not a straightforward process. Of course, I've already gone through it and thought about, okay, what are all the things that need to happen before Oliver can become somebody who is um, who socializes with peers in a healthy way and is an advocate for anti-bullying? I wrote all these things down and thought, okay, well, probably um, he needs to, it, it, he needs to realize that his behavior is not appropriate first. I'm going to bring that up. And kind of, so take a moment to write down all the things, all the steps of change that would need to happen between your current state and your desired state. And just mess around with where the arrows of the diagram should be. What kind of are the, what needs to come first and what needs to come second. I'll again give you a few minutes to uh, do this. Probably give you a bit longer for this, maybe closer to 10. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the Whova Q&A or in the chat. And for any of you who have joined late and you are not working for a mission-driven organization, feel free to choose a case study of an issue you are passionate about. Let's say a charity you donate to already or some kind of um, community program at your church or temple, something like that. And feel free to um, follow along with a case study to try and learn how the process works.
if you guys are ready to move on, if you need a bit more time, please write so in the chat. Otherwise, moving on to the next steps. Write down your last couple of thoughts. All right. So now that you have outlined the journey that the protagonist needs to go through, why isn't this journey happening more often is my question. Or maybe it is happening. There are definitely uh, students, for example, in this case, students who uh, were previously bullies who grows out of it or um, learns to be uh, a more friendly uh, peer, uh, apologizes. Similarly, you might find people who learn, hopefully, to not be a racist um, or to be more tolerant of beliefs or um, people who are previously in poor economic conditions and, you know, uh, find income sources and find ways to get out of their position. Now, obviously, this journey isn't happening as often as enough and it's not as fast as enough. If not, then this wouldn't be a problem that you're trying to solve. So. What we're going to focus on now is actually about the arrows, the blue arrows in between the steps. In other words, what interventions would help with Oliver's journey or your protagonist's journey? What is the engine behind the arrows between the steps? And I really encourage you to try and decide or find, figure out an intervention for every arrow and think about if the next step is to happen, what needs to take place in the arrow? So for example, if for Oliver, um, he's currently a bully and he the next step is that he needs to realize that his behavior is not appropriate, what needs to happen in between for him to realize? Um, so for example, maybe somebody needs to identify and report the bullying incident and then tell him about the impact of his actions on the peer. If um, he is, if, Oliver is to relearn how to relate to peers, then somebody needs to teach him about these new healthy behaviors and actually give him a chance to relearn. If he, uh, Oliver is to become more tolerant and emotionally stable in school, somebody uh, could assist him by giving resources and support to address the underlying issues that led to the violent behavior in the first place. If he is to reconcile with the peers that he bullied before, Maybe somebody needs to facilitate that conversation and at the very least provide a safe place to have that apology. And if we want Oliver um, to be somebody who becomes an anti-bullying advocate, then every time he stands up for somebody, uh, for a peer, uh, teachers and adults need to validate to say that your actions are great. You know, great job. Thank you for um, standing up for your friends. So what's happening here is we are identifying the engine or the trigger or the catalyst behind the blue arrow because chances are changes are not happening magically. So if we want these series of changes to happen to get to our ideal state, then there may be need for interventions at each stage. Maybe some of these uh, steps can happen on their own, but chances are they can be helped along by an intervention. And that is what we are trying to identify with the blue boxes. Trying to identify all the interventions for the protagonist journey that you've outlined is a process that takes a long time and really needs a lot more evidence and a lot more thinking to do so. So you are welcome to try and you know, create these little boxes and these interventions for every arrow that you have. Um, I'm not going to set separate time for, to do that right now because really that takes a couple of hours to do properly. What I've done in the next step is I've basically just taken the blue boxes and written down the list of, well, somebody needs to do these things. Now, unfortunately, saying that somebody needs to do these five things is not good enough because it doesn't actually assign us responsibility. And not all of these um, interventions are things that I, as for example, a social enterprise um, can do. So what I've done is taken these five things and turned them 
into programs or projects or actions and activities that I as a social enterprise could do. So for example, if the ideal intervention is that somebody needs to identify, report and respond to bullying incidents, then maybe I as a social enterprise can come in and provide clear guidelines given to school staff on how to do so. Um, if a student, somebody needs to teach, the, uh, teach Oliver how to better relate to your peers, maybe I can come in and create a workshop on how to do so. If, uh, Olive, uh, if Oliver needs the right resources to connect to uh, emotional support to address the underlying behaviors, well then maybe I can come in and create a list of resources for the school staff to connect bullies to the right support. Maybe I can come in and create a safe space and do the actual facilitation of the apology and reconciliation. And if we want teachers and adults to validate the anti-bullying actions, what I could do as a social enterprise is to train the teachers and parents to champion anti-bullying culture. So what we're doing is taking these uh, earlier sentences about somebody needs to do this and say, well, what can I do about it from the given the position that I am? And where are all the different stakeholders who need to play a part and how can I encourage these different stakeholders to do their part or equip them with the right tools and right information to do their job better? Hopefully you can see that a list of interventions like such is more useful <laughs> and definitely more concrete than just where we started from. The, one of the benefits of having a full theory of change is not just that it outlines interventions we should do, but also when each intervention should happen. So we, we are understanding that, okay, the facilitation of the reconciliation conversation needs to happen at this stage when Oliver is ready for it. Um, teachers and parents need to champion anti-bullying culture perhaps a little bit later than they need to be given clear guidelines first. So it's a great way to prioritize your actions and sequence your interventions as well. So if you have this theory of change, what then comes next? Uh, before I get into what comes next, I would love to answer any questions if there are any from the um, workshop participants. Hi, Charlie. Uh, yeah, so just the invitation was feel free to write it on a piece of paper because the easiest way to make sure you have the right space is for it to be scribbles. And the first draft that you're going to work on with your impact strategy is going to be incredibly messy and it doesn't fit very nicely into my uh, boxes. <laughs> Anyone else with questions? Okay, if there are no questions, I'm happy to move on to what comes next. So, when you have gone through this process and have really a skeleton of a theory of change, and by that I'm including, of course, uh, this list with all your little boxes connecting to the arrows and also um, versions of your boxes where you've actually attached activities and interventions that you can do as a social enterprise or an impact uh, program. Once you have this, this is not where it ends. If we were really creating an impact strategy for you guys, I actually, you know, to be honest, we, wouldn't, we shouldn't do it this way because an impact strategy is not supposed to be a thought exercise you do by yourself with a piece of paper, but it's supposed to engage the entire team and also the stakeholders in question. So it would involve everything from research interviews to full-on consultation sessions, depending on what's necessary. And a lot, a lot of research, a lot of data, a lot of evidence, asking experts what they think, because what um, in this thought exercise we've done, we made a lot of assumptions, many of which may be false. This workshop really intends to show you what kind of work is possible and also what kind of work is necessary. 
So if you had to do this impact strategy properly, you would have to do a complete theory of change, which what we just did is not, right? We would want to map the wider system that incentivized current behaviors. Okay, so why did, what motivated Oliver to get into a power struggle in the first place? Um, what, uh, al who allowed this to happen? And how do we account for diversity in the process? Okay, so what if Oliver's situation is more complicated than this vague nothingness we put on him? What if Oliver has learning difficulties and traditional workshops are not very effective? What if Oliver is a newcomer to Canada and is lashing out because his English skills prevent him from making friends? Um, what happens when race, gender identity, or gender um, economic statuses come into play? How does that complicate or uh, make the situation any different, right? Because diversity and inclusion really shouldn't be a happy accident that you report on at the end to say that, oh, we've run these 50 workshops and we happen to have 40% um, of students who identify as person of color. Well, okay, that's a happy accident at the very end. But instead, diversity and inclusion should be a planned outcome that is written into the process from the very beginning. So how do we create a theory of change that works with these contexts? And of course, it can't just stop with Oliver. So we need to create journeys for a lot more stakeholders than just this one protagonist we've created. So we would do this exercise again with the student who experienced the bullying, the parents, the teachers, and the peers and the other students who didn't participate in the bullying but watched and let these things happen. What did they learn? and understanding all these different journeys, but then also understanding how these journeys affect each other. So if we change how the um, bystanding, bystander students uh, act and perceive things, how does that affect Oliver's journey or the teacher's journey, so on and so forth? We would also need an implementation plan. So of course we have an idea of what implementation plans uh, might be, but specifically I'm talking about assigning numbers to the theory of change. So thinking about the timelines and the scales to check if any of this is actually going to work. So in our example, for example, uh, in our example, I mentioned talking about um, providing resources to un address the underlying violent behaviors. Okay, what if addressing that takes seven years of therapy? What if all of our interventions are never going to work because the timelines means that Oliver will have graduated by that time. What about scale? So if, for example, your ambition was trying to make Vancouver zero waste and you only have resources to intervene in the journey of 50 households, well, that's going to take, that isn't going to create any systematic change and it's just not going to meet your ambitions if your resources and the scale that you can achieve intervention at is way too small. And then there's also this exercise of humility. Are we the best uh, people to be doing this intervention? And if not, how can we partner to divide and conquer? So for example, if we are qualified to give these anti-bullying workshops, but somebody else is better equipped to work with the teachers on policy and guidelines, okay, then how can we split that up? And of course, as a business, or even if you're not a business and a nonprofit, still, how do you integrate revenue model into the theory of change? All these interventions we talked about, they're all well and good, but okay, where is the money coming from? How much is gonna cost us? How much is, the, where is the income coming from? And if our customers are not the same as our stakeholders, or if only one of our stakeholders is the customers, how does that affect anything when money comes into the picture? The monitoring framework, or as I like to call it, the pivot framework. So I like the word pivot framework because it implies the whole point of monitoring results is to change what we're doing if we're not doing well. And I made all these assumptions in the example I showed you, right? Like Oliver is going to relearn positive behaviors and we're going to create a safe space. And that means he can apologize to the peer he bullied. But maybe we actually try it out. And the evidence says that this apology conversation just, you know, reignites the conflict that was dying down. So you know what, evidence is proving my theory wrong. So I better change my theory before it traumatizes more kids. The idea is that we are continuously monitoring results and that we know exactly when to start pivoting, to go back and really um, stay humble and let the evidence uh, constantly update our theory 
to the point that we can be a lot more confident that we are indeed having and creating positive impacts. Now, if you are interested in creating a positive, uh, this impact strategy for yourselves, um, you know, impact strategy is obviously what I'm deeply, deeply passionate about. Uh, we, UCC does a lot of work on fundraising, impact investment, business models, and all these things beyond um, just impact strategies. So we support organizations to start run and fund positive impact programs. So if you need support with uh, devising the impact strategy or any other part of your positive impact programs, please get in touch because that's our mission. That's what we're here for. And in that case, um, please get in touch with me. Here's my email.